This is the Boston Mass, Jose Raymond, and we, we like to call this the brighter side, the light side. Uh, I am here with Dr. Tony Hughes. Hughes. Um, so listen, Tony, they call you doctor, and, and I, I had a um, debate with my friend here. He's like, where, where does the doctor come from? I'm assuming it is a, a doctorate of law because you were a lawyer previously, correct? Yeah, I've been a lawyer for about nine years, so I'm retired from law now, sold my law office. Um, so I'm a doctorate of jurisprudence, not a doctor of medicine. Of jurisprudence. But since, since, my, uh, since my original passion ever since I was like 14 years old was was biology and chemistry and I've always talked high level stuff with my friends they've always called me doctor as in medical doctor yeah. that advises them yeah well that, that's interesting you were one of the smarter ones that uh, realized that it's very difficult to make a living within the fitness industry um, and, and the bodybuilding world that you you went elsewhere and 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 actually did quite well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I had 22 employees, one of the largest, if not the largest bankruptcy law office in Northern California. And a lot of cases, a lot of responsibility, a lot of stress. At the same time, still bodybuilding, but never really competing or anything until age 30, while I was still a practicing lawyer. But you were training and, and always looked good. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay, I thought I looked good. Okay. <laughs> At the time, I thought I looked awesome. I was the most yeah. shredded, biggest guy ever because, you know, big fish in a little pond. And then now I look back at my pictures and I'm like, oh, my God, I did not earn that ego. Well, you still <laughs> you know, fit in a after, suit. I still what? You still fit in a suit. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was. I did travel to Asia as a lawyer still and, and get a bunch of custom suits. So they, oh, okay. did, they did fit, yeah. But now, forget about it, as you know. Now, I noticed in your uh, your Skype profile picture, you had a mustache. What's that all about? I, I always change my facial hair. grows pretty quickly. So I change between a beard to a beard with a mustache to a goatee to just a mustache, and then I go back clean again yeah. for variety. Okay. All right, so what made you retire from law? I mean, that's a great uh, yeah. job. You want the brutal, the brutal, brutal, honest of truth. Of course, that's all it's, we want. Uh, okay. It's because baby mama got pregnant. Ah. And she, and she made minimum wage, and I made a lot of money. And in California, if you make a lot of money – then you get someone pregnant who doesn't make a lot of money, you're going to be giving all of your money and be enslaved to making that amount of money because the court will say, oh, you're capable of making this much money. So <laughs> I started oh. winding down everything at that time. But there was, there was two other elements. I had traveled to Asia before that, and I did know that eventually I wanted to live in Asia. So it was only a matter of time. This just accelerated the process. And number two... Uh, the amount of stress that practicing law was causing me not being able to sleep at night uh, because I, I took my cases very personally, and the more cases I had, then the more things I've got to be thinking about. I just had no peace of mind. I just wasn't happy, healthy mentally. Okay, so your your baby mama is from the States or from the Philippines? From the States. She came over from the Philippines to marry a you know, uh, an American guy when she was 18, and then he passed away, and then uh, she has two daughters, 15 and 16, from him, and then we met, and then she got pregnant. Okay. Now, what, what type of law did you say it was? It was about, eight, let's say, 80% bankruptcy, 20% real estate, and business, and financial law. Oh, okay. So you were a busy man. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of that going on, especially in the last ten years. Uh, that's another reason why I, I lost a little bit of interest in law, as I was practicing law during the window of time when you could make a thousand dollars an hour as a bankruptcy attorney, because the clients would pay so much they could never. There were so few bankruptcy attorneys 
that if you were willing to work 16 hours a day and take consults, you'd, you'd had unlimited business. So um, after that window passed and the bankruptcy cases dropped, the court system had become very robust, and now now they had all this firepower. Now they can spend even more time on each case. So you go from making $1,000 an hour to making like $100 an hour. No. Oh. oh, no, 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 no. So that's understandable that you would uh, you would leave, but you obviously did well enough that you could leave to more pursue your passion, which is obviously bodybuilding, the fitness lifestyle, the you know supplement side of it. Now, what made you you know attack the supplement side of it so aggressively? I'd always experimented with supplements but I was afraid to do steroids so I didn't start that until age 30 for my first bodybuilding competition after I watched my friend uh, win a physique competition doing a transformation with steroids and how well it worked for him um, so I, I was experimenting with nootropics things like this but I also before experimenting I was kind of afraid of drugs in general like even NyQuil <laughs> I just I didn't even want to take NyQuil over the counter stuff I was super anti-drug and then I, I, I realized how closed-minded I was, and I didn't, I didn't understand that drugs were tools. I just thought, you know, people who do drugs are either addicted or it's, it's just a negative thing. And then it, what really opened up my mind was DNP, the fat-burning drug, uh, because I read so much terrible stuff about it, and yet I had a friend that used it before that was fine. My girlfriend had experimented with it before, and so I said, okay, I just want to know for myself – if DMP is as bad as everybody makes it sound, or if this is another, one of the things I learned as a lawyer is that most of the stuff in the media was just completely false because it either, it omitted facts or it sensationalized the wrong parts. So I, I, I wondered, is DMP one of these things, or is there a truth to DMP that's not being exposed? So I experimented on myself and I did the DMP diaries, and I, that's how I, when I started the YouTube channel, and it became more than just supplement experimentation. It became almost like a political experiment, uh, like a mindset, a philosophy experiment. Because here you have all these people that say it's terrible, and then I tried it, and it worked incredible for me. I, I fell in love with DMP, and I used it over and over. And then I started, when I broadcasted it, and everybody else started messaging me saying, yeah, I use DMP, and it's fantastic, and uh, because I use it responsibly, I have no problems with it. And I was like, wow, I have the opportunity to shed light and truth or at least another perspective that isn't being given by the rest of the media. Wow, let me tell you, this is uh, very enlightening to me because this is a topic I didn't even want to touch. And before we spoke, I said, is there anything you don't want to talk about? Um, and I was expecting that to be one of them. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, DNP is poison. It's, um, you know, it's taboo. It's, it's something that is so dangerous as far as I know. And um, it's interesting that you did want to talk about it and that you brought it up. And I'm sure a lot of people need to know this or want to hear this um, to make their own conclusion. But, you know, I, I'm very intrigued is to your thought process and why you feel it's safe or why you feel it was uh, productive, it was useful, um, and why you're so willing to speak about it uh, since it is so taboo. Yeah, so first of all, DMP is not illegal, but it is illegal to sell it for human consumption. It's a, it, we'll call it a fertilizer, a plant. It's used. To, you can plant or and manufacture dynamite. It is flammable. It's explosive. So wait, 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 wait. Say, wait, hold on. So you're telling me that you're totally cool with plant fertilizer, dynamite, explosives to be taking it is for human consumption. Yeah, but let's give let's give you another example. One of the old school bodybuilding drugs is GHB, which is created from GBL which is actually tire wheel cleaner and yeah. you know it peels the it peels paint or, or stains off of wheels right 
so it's a chemical and it's and yet it when it's just treated with something that makes it less acidic it's completely harmless it's it has a lot of health benefits yeah there's a lot of other compounds and a lot of other drugs out there that sound very scary because they're used for some industrial purpose but they're actually not dangerous to the human body in small amounts. So DMP, yes, it definitely has killed some people. Not very many. I mean, the thing is, everybody who's ever been killed by DMP, it's been this big media thing. So it sounds like more people that have been killed by it than not. Uh, but it's, it's easy to overdose. The body overheats. And the problem is you can't just like give yourself a shot or an anecdote to get it out. The body's got to flush it out itself. And you, know, you may be dead before the end of that process from overheating. But just like any drug, with responsible use, yes, I believe it's safe. It works by the same mechanism that we have you know, natural in the body, which is our brown fat cells. They burn calories as heat to keep us warm. Humans don't have a lot of brown fat compared to animals because animals have to stay warmer and out in the snow. And we have the technology and sophistication to make things like clothes and shelter. So we don't need as much ground fat to survive, but we still have it. And, and it does the, it works through the same mechanism. So DMP's mechanism of action, its process is actually a very natural process in the body. And okay. people think that it's, it's, it's toxic. Okay. It is toxic for two reasons. The main reason though, that I believe it's toxic is because it burns so much fat so fast that creates a huge amount of oxidation. So that's why I take vitamin C, vitamin E, drink a lot of green tea, resveratrol, things to minimize the oxidation that's happening in the body that everybody should be taking anyways because we have a lot of environmental oxidation that happens in our body. Okay, let's say all of this is um, real. How do we know that it's real and how do we know exactly what a safe dose is and, and how do we know that my body is going to handle it the same way as yours? Okay, so first question, how do we know it's real? Uh, DNP is not likely to be faked because it is so cheap. It's like buying, going to the store and buying fertilizer. The reason why it's expensive is because it's really hard to get and to sell because the government has roadblocked all the ways that you can try to get it, capsulate it, and sell it on the Internet. Like if you try to capsulate it sell it on the Internet, They'll try to shut your website down, your payment processing. They'll, the government will make it very difficult for you, for you to sell it. So that drives the price up, kind of just like any illegal drug. You know, the markup is like 100 times just because of, like, the risk and difficulty in, in, in obtaining it. Um, so, so it's not likely to be faked. It's easy to tell that it's working because you can feel the body heat. I mean, there's not a lot of fake things you could put in to give you that same feeling mm -hmm. of the, the body heat that happens from it. If the DMP is pure and there are no fillers, then you light it on fire, it will explode or catch on fire very quickly, like lighting a flare, like an underlighter flare. And it's, it's, a, it's a remarkable explosion, depending on how tight you pack it especially if it's packed very tight in the capsule and you light it on fire it will make you know like a firework explosion uh, but DMP is often cut with fillers not not that it's diluted to save money it's just that if you are gonna have a 400 milligram capsule a capsule that can hold 400 milligrams but you only want to dose it at 200 milligrams per capsule then you're gonna have 200 milligrams of filler in it just like magnesium stearate or microcrystalline cellulose just inactive filler rice rice powder whatever and so that's going to cause it not to catch on fire as much so just because you light one on fire doesn't mean that uh and, and it doesn't light on fire doesn't mean it's fake it just means there's fillers but if the milligrams let's say you have a tablet that says 50 milligrams it, it probably has 50 milligrams in it but the whole tablet actually weighs you know, 100 milligrams, because it's got 50 milligrams of, of filler. This is crazy to me. <laughs> it is crazy, but you know what? I love that you're discussing it, because you have dealt with it, and you know what you're talking about, and uh, I still would not touch it in a million years. I, I just wouldn't. I, I, I don't, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I would in the future, once it was like, proven you know um hundred percent 
Well, okay, so let, let's. You got three different types of people. You've got the very disciplined career bodybuilder like you. You do not need anything crazy like like DMP because you got your diet, your training, you got your system down, very dedicated. And then on the other extreme, you've got like the bodybuilding nerd that doesn't even really lift properly, but they experiment with all of these chemicals. It's more of a mental game, like solving the puzzle of the human body, yeah. but they're not actually, you know, putting all of the, the right emphasis on the right elements to actually, you know, get the, the goal. It's just more about experimenting with chemicals. Then you have like me who's in between, who has some level of dedication and does understand all of the elements, but also some level of bodybuilding nerd who wants to experiment and find all this cutting edge stuff and, and take shortcuts so that I can eat however I want and diet for only 10 days for a show and then use something like DMP to cut the weight really fast. If someone's got, if someone's right on point with their diet, they don't need things like DMP. I, I agree. But I've also met a lot of people that we cannot figure out what their limitation to fat loss is. We've, we've checked their thyroid levels, their hormone levels, everything. And they just have some genetic predisposition to get fat and, in those cases, DNP is the only drug that they've ever used that's worked. It's a, it's a cure for obesity. Uh, so it's still important to explore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It just depends you on mean the someone that, that was way overweight that used DNP and it brought them down to a healthy level? Or was it a yes. fatter bodybuilder that it brought them into good condition? So I, I explore a lot of these concept in the contest of bodybuilding but what I have coming up to me is fans who've actually cured certain diseases like we'll say obesity that aren't bodybuilders at all they're just lurking to lose fat wow. and maybe they have a hundred pounds of extra fat and and they just keep getting fatter and and I, everything is in check it's not like they're eating a ton of candy and food they're just there's some element that we don't understand about human fat loss or genetic code that causes wow. some people to get fat and DMP is the solution that works for absolutely everyone. But the third part to your question was how do we know that DMP is going to work for everybody? How do we know if the dosage is the same? Everybody does react differently insofar as the dosage. So, so I'd say the dosage range is somewhere between 100 milligrams and like 700 milligrams. And and someone might take 200 milligrams and get an incredible amount of fat loss, and someone else might take uh, 200 milligrams and not, and they might not get much fat loss. They might instead need to take like 500 milligrams. So it does it does take experimenting with the dosage. The lethal dosage is probably somewhere between 1,000 and 3,000 milligrams, depending on the person. Okay, um, this is groundbreaking stuff to me because. Uh... You know, we may look back in a year, five years, ten years, and be like, Dr. Tony Huge had a huge idea that could have been saving a lot of lives. Uh, but, you know, for right now, everyone thinks that your ideas, you know, could kill lives. Um, so I, I'm, my eyes are open, and, and I'm so glad I got to hear you explain it the way you are. Um, so I have other questions regarding DMP. All right, this is the Boston Mass. Thanks again for watching. Now, if you're not subscribing, subscribe now. Tell all your friends to subscribe. If you haven't, do it now, all right? Peace.